Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. We have a rock star guest with us today and a topic that I'm excited to talk about because selfishly, it's an area that I probably ignore and I know you're right there with me, Mr. and Mrs. Business Owner. This is a topic of growing our wealth quickly, investing, investing in the stock market. And I feel like as business owners, we kind of just put this stuff as a, oh, I'll get to it later because we're so focused on running and growing our businesses. Well, we need to put it now. And if you sit with us and hang out with us for 20 minutes today, we're going to debunk some myths around the stock market. My guest, Myrna Lane Hippolyte, a wealth strategist, wealth coach. Welcome to the show, Myrna. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me, Brandon. It's so great to be here. Um, as you mentioned, I am a financial wellness coach and I work with you know business owners to really turn that amazing income that they make into you know a million dollars in net worth. And so even if they're new to investing in the stock market or are, are not financial professionals or like you don't want to think about finances, you know, I make it, you know, in such a way that you put your money on the fast track in an automated fashion, right? In a way that makes sense for you that you don't have to think about it. But knowing your money really is growing your money. So you do have to take the time to kind of look at it because what you don't look at, you ignore, it doesn't really grow. Yeah. I mean, what I heard is uh, you just promised us our first million dollars in net worth from listening to this episode. So uh, awesome. Love that, that we're going to get that out of this episode. <laughs> well, I think the other thing that um, you, you kind of touched on there was business owners are usually really good at knowing their business numbers. But then when it comes to personal finance, whether we put that on our spouse um, or, or we just kind of ignore it and, and let it happen, it's just it's that afterthought, right? Like we're so focused on our business. So before we dive into growing our wealth, investing in the stock market, um, I'm always curious. I mean, you're, you're in the field of money, which can be polarizing for some people. How did you get into this in the first place? Well, I do have about 30 years of experience. Yeah, I know I look young, but I do have 30 years of experience in the finance field, uh, ranging from private equity, corporate finance. Um, I was a financial advisor at one point in time. And so I've always been close to finance and I've always wanted to know, hey, what what, what goes behind the actual decision making process in you know choosing an investment? And so I kind of fielded my career and went through different avenues. But what led me to financial wellness coaching was seeing that there was a gap, right? And my, and my primary target market, I, I do focus on women, uh, was, the, was a gap, right? Women um, are not necessarily uh, too engaged sometimes when it comes to their money on the financial front. And I had seen a lot of friends and family members that kind of you know didn't maximize their opportunities because they weren't looking at their money so i wanted to be able to establish a business where i could help others you know fast track their money growth in a way that made sense that wasn't overwhelming that wasn't complicated and the stock market really is you know the big area where i found that a lot of people a lot of my clients had you know had exposure but weren't necessarily taking the plunge because they think it's complicated. They think they might lose their money and they don't have the time to deal with that as busy entrepreneurs. Yeah. I was going to say, there's a lot of complexity that surrounds the stock market and investing in general. I mean, if you make, if you make a bad investment, you lose your money. There's no, there's no guarantees in investing your, your money. And we work so hard for it. We grow our businesses to make more money and make an impact too, that, I don't know, maybe do people not feel safe? They not feel educated enough? What are what are some of the common things that you run into when you start working with people, their their fears, if you will, around investing? Well, number one, they think it takes a whole boatload of money to invest, which is a myth, right? You don't need thousands and thousands of dollars to invest. You can start with as little as five dollars a day, frankly. 
you know, the cost of that little latte at Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or your cafe of choice, um, you can put that money aside and invest and start small, right? And see what ensues and, and what happens and educate yourself because there's a big gap because people tend to think that one, it takes a lot of money and they don't know what they're doing. So they don't want to lose the money, like you said, that we work hard to make. And so they don't engage. And that's not necessarily true. You can engage in many ways. There are so many ways to invest in the stock market. You don't have to be that analyst like I used to be, pouring over financial statements, trying to understand what's happening with a particular company in order to invest. Because the information that those analysts, that they pay to the money um, to, to, to recommend stocks, that information is readily available out there for the public. And people don't necessarily understand that and don't use that information uh, to their advantage. So you don't have to be that analyst pouring over stocks, which sometimes people think. You don't need a lot of money to invest. And it doesn't have to be complicated because if you don't want to invest in individual stocks, you can invest in a mutual fund or an exchange traded fund. And that's simply you know, a basket of different stocks, right? You can invest in Microsoft, Amazon, Target, Costco, all in one. So you don't necessarily have to put all your money in one particular stock. And people don't realize that. Now, if you are even more skittish and you say, hey, I don't even want to pick a mutual fund, there are things called robo advisors now. So you go to your bank or you go to a brokerage company and you answer a series of questions. And if I say, okay, Brandon, how would you feel if you know your investments went down 10% in one day? Would you take to the bed or would you start to buy more? Depending on how you answer the questions, they will say, okay, Brandon, you need to invest in X, Y, and Z. And it's algorithm, you know, very much you know, tech focus. It's a robot really that says, okay, here's what you invest in. And they put you in that investment and you don't have to think about it. And it's aligned with your particular thought process. Because I always tell people that investing in the stock market is kind of like food, right? People have different preferences. What I invest in may not be what you invest in, right? I may have, you know, a little bit more. Uh, I may be a more of a risk taker and say, okay, I'm going to go gung ho for this tech investment. Um, one big company that's been going through the roof is NVIDIA. It's a semiconductor play, and that company has been going through the roof. But not everybody has the stomach for that kind of volatility. So there's volatility on the upside and the downside. So you kind of have to know, like just like food, some people like spicy food, some people don't eat meat, etc. You've got to know where you stand when it comes to your investor preferences before you actually dive in. Yeah, that's a, that's a good tip. And that's one of the things that um, I think people get caught up in is we're analyzing all these different stocks and companies. We have to run our own companies. Like I don't have time to look at the, the books of uh, NVIDIA and all these other tech companies who are blowing up. And right now the market's in a recession, so it's doing crazy things like, OK, I can't keep up with it. I don't have the patience. I'll just wait. Waiting is obviously not a good thing. But is that where someone like you comes in, a financial wellness coach? Like, how can I invest in the stock market, assuming I don't want to be a day trader? I don't have the patience for that. I don't think any of our, our none of my clients do, and none of our audience really does either. Um, but we do want to make money. We want to grow our wealth and have it done passively um, and automated, I believe you said in the beginning of this episode. So where do you start to come in? Like, what does your process look like to help somebody do that, to make sure it's done with confidence? And it's also not something we have to check every day nervously, like, oh, no, did my investments go down? Do I have to sell everything? <laughs> like, where, what's the balance there? Well, for me as a financial coach, <clears throat> what I do with my clients is there are a couple of approaches. Some people decide, you know what, Myrna, I don't have time to be in a group. I want to work one on one with you. So we work one on one and I teach them the basics. Right. I teach them. How do you look at a stock if you do actually want to? invest in a stock. It doesn't have to be you looking at it every day, every month, etc. But you can pick certain companies um, that you know provide products or services that you use that have strong you know financial backgrounds. And I teach you what to look for um, and how to leverage the information that's already out there. Right. And um, I also teach you about mutual funds, how to evaluate those exchange traded funds 
and how to get yourself set up so that by the end of our work together, your investments are set up on autopilot. So we work together, you pick your investment, it's on autopilot. Because the key really here to success when it comes to investing, you know, the magic formula consists of three things, right? Time, you got to give yourself time, right? So if you invest one time now, that's okay, right? But if you invest now, 30 years from now, you're going to be, you're in a much better place. So time is number one. Consistency is second. So that's something that's often underrated, right? Don't put a thousand dollars in now and then forget it and then come back 30 years later. You actually want to be able to put some money in consistently month after month after month. And three is your rate of return. So you want to invest in things that are going to provide you with a great rate of return. We all know that inflation has gone up and what we used to buy for a hundred dollars, you know, a year ago is not the same as what we can buy now. So you want to have investments that outpace inflation, right? Because if you put your money under a mattress, prices go up. It's like you lost money. Your money's losing value. So you want to invest at least at a pace that's going to keep up with inflation. And so time consistency and a good rate of return that's higher than inflation is really the key formula to success. Mm, that's those are those are good tips. I'm curious because I think uh, not to get political here, but I don't I don't think we have accurate data on what the actual rate of inflation is right now. Um, how, can you speak to that just quickly over the past really two or three years? Like, what is the true rate of inflation? Because I went to the grocery store the other day. I bought four things. And I spent hundred and two dollars, and I was like, "This is this is absurd." <laughs> Bought a mop, mop cleaner, and and two other stupid little things. And I was like, hundred and two dollars? What is happening?" So, <laughs> can you shed some light on this for us? What is the well, rate we have to be? Inflation has gone up tremendously over the last year or so. I mean, I think the last number reported this month actually was an increase of about three and a half percent. And so interest rates are going up. Inflation is going up. So the prices of what you're buying are going up as well. And so you have to be able to have some form of protection when you're in that place where you may not necessarily be earning more, right? And you still have to go in and buy those items for $104. It maybe cost, you know, used to cost $50 or $45. So obviously certain items have increased more in price and there's some volatility. I mean, there was a period where we looked at eggs, for example, you know, beef, et cetera. It all depends. But overall, prices are going up and have been going up steadily, you know, at least for the last year. Mm. Yeah, I, I think keeping that in mind, knowing, knowing the number that you, your money needs to keep up with, really, if you're making a return of one or 2% in however you're investing, you're still losing money based on the rate of inflation. So knowing that is super important, which is why I asked that question, of course. Um, but I'm curious uh, for you listening, watching, if you're watching, I put uh, Myrna's quick little download on the screen, five ways to make your money work for you. It'll also be in the show notes, wherever you're watching or listening. So make sure you go check that out. Um, but Myrna, I'm, I'm also curious. So what are, are there any other sort of myths that we haven't covered uh, for people when they start investing in the stock market? Um, what do you, what do you need to debunk when you start working with your clients? It's all about the money, right? And them losing money. So mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of fear around losing money in the stock market and feeling like, you know, stock market is a little bit different than some more aggressive investments like crypto, for example, or, you know, there have been, you know, a lot of different types of scams out there with people, you know, usually if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true, people, when it comes to investing. So the stock market is a way to increase your money, right, at a good rate, right, in a reasonable fashion. So, you can potentially lose money, that's true. But if you have the tools and if you're educated and you're invested in the right vehicles, the stock market goes up and down. There are periods of, of uptick, there are periods of downtick. But at the end of the day, overall, the average return on the stock market 
you know, I think for the last 20 years has been about 10%. And depending on your risk profile, you can invest in things that give you more than 10% or things that give you less than 10%. But the important thing is when you invest, let's say at 10%, your money can double, let's say in a seven year period. So if I put money in today, I'm investing at a consistent 10%, in seven years, my money can double. You want your money to be doubling at a rapid rate. And the higher that rate, obviously the, the shorter period of time is gonna take for your money to double. If you're putting it under a mattress, that's not going to work. But an important thing to, to mention if outside of investing is that interest rates are high now. If your money, your savings account, or where you're parking your money right now is not generating at least 4% interest, you need to have a conversation with your bank and ask them what they have, what have they done for you lately. Nothing. Not a big fan of banks, but that's okay. No shame on banks. <laughs> um, and the, actually, so I want to touch on that real quick because that's an important calculation to understand for those of you who are listening maybe don't the way that Myrna got that calculation is the rule of 72 so you take your interest Absolutely. rate divided by 72 that's how you find what how long it takes your money to double and i don't know if i've ever heard this said but i'm just going to go on the record and say it i think you should take your interest rate subtract the rate of inflation because that's the true time period for your money to double because you're still losing that there's that gap right whether inflation is 3% or 8% you have to subtract that from the interest you're earning because you're not actually your your money's not growing at that same rate. So just keep that in mind when you're calculating that your investment doubling rate. Um, but that is super important to know because not all investments are the same, not all risk profiles are the same, like Myrna Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. So Myrna, last question. First of all, thank you for coming and opening up this conversation because this is incredibly valuable for small business owners. Again, we tend to put this stuff to the side. I've been guilty of this in the past. I said. I'm growing my business. I'm not worried about my wealth. My wealth will come from my business. Well, shame on me, right? That was that was a stupid thought in my own head. So <laughs> don't for, do it, Brandon. <laughs> I know, I know. I do, I do have investments now. I've I've learned from my mistakes. But for for those of us out there who uh, maybe we want we want better returns, we want our money to grow faster, we want to actually focus on growing our money in the stock market. What are some ways aside from first of all working from you? Because Duh. Just please reach out to Myrna. If you're listening. <laughs> Get help from a financial wellness coach. Someone can hold your hand and do this with you. But if we're, you know, just a little dumb and we want to try to DIY this, what are some ways we can do this starting like today to get our money in the stock market, even if it's three dollars a day? Like what's some advice you have for um, newbies, if you will, into the stock market? I would say educate yourself. Education is key. Number one. Um, usually what I tell my clients, downloading something as simple as a CNBC app, right? And if you have, you know, a couple companies that you want to look into, download those and add them to a watch list on CNBC app. That's usually good because then you can kind of track, hey, what's happening with those companies? If you put in $25, $50, you can figure out what's happening, right? Use a platform because you need an investment company, right? A brokerage firm to be able to, to transact um, investments. Use a brokerage firm that has a lot of resources, right? So for example, Fidelity. Fidelity has a lot of great resources. They have, they explain things in a way, they even have a youth section. You might not be a youth, right? From 12 to 17, but the way they explain certain concepts, you get it, right? They break it down in terms of, you know, simple things like investing is like, you know, planting a tree, et cetera. So they make it simple and they do have a lot of seminars, a lot of different, um, you know, information that will help you educate yourself. There's things like Investopedia. They have a stock simulation tool. So if you don't want to go risk your money, but you want to see what happens, go invest you know, with some paper money, some not real money, then you can see what happens. That's how you educate yourself. But you've got to kind of take a plunge, right? Work with somebody like myself, a financial wellness coach, right? That can teach you uh, the ropes and educate you. That's awesome. I, I love this advice. I love this episode too, because um, this is my own personal feeling that I'll, I'll just share with you and you can defend or, or rebuke how you see fit. But I don't think having a 401k or an IRA is really uh, actively investing as a business owner. We have we have access to way more money and resources that we should be smart with. And those are kind of the lazy passive investing approaches. So um, I would strongly encourage that you listening, 
reach out to Myrna or somebody like Myrna at least. Um, but no, Myrna, thank you for, for coming on the show and sharing your knowledge with us and helping us grow our wealth faster than we are right now. Thank you for having me, Brandon. All right. And for those of you listening, remember the, the PDF, the five ways to make your money work for you. It's on the screen. It's in the show notes, wherever you're, you're watching or listening, go check out Myrna's website. You can learn more about her, how she can help you grow your money fast. And don't forget to subscribe. I want to bring you these daily tips on how you can grow your business, grow your wealth, make yourself a better person and individual overall so that you can have a better life. Ultimately, it's not all about business. It's about growing your whole being and your whole self. So make sure you subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmony.